Welcome to our weekly maritime vlog. I'm Corey Ransom with International Maritime Security Associates. We have Bennett, our number one producer, behind the camera making sure that I stay on track out here. Mr. B, still resting on the floor and keeping things under control. This week, we are gonna talk about man overboard technology. On the vlog, we've talked about cruise lines, we've talked about the Cruise Vessel Safety and Security Act, we've talked about cruise line security, we've talked about a number of topics that relate to the cruise lines and just different things that are happening in that industry. There's a lot of growth that is taking place in the cruise line industry and there's a lot of really cool things that are happening. The size of the ships are getting bigger, but the amenities that are offered on board these ships are improving as well. As satellite technology improves, we'll see the connectedness of these ships improve and the experience is gonna to continue to improve. There are just some really cool things that you can do on different cruise ships around the world. There's also smaller ships, so if you like a more intimate setting, there's cruise ships that go through the Northwest Passage, which is absolutely incredible. So we've talked a lot about the things that are happening in the industry. One of the things that we thought we would highlight was man overboard, man overboard detection technologies, and just talk a little bit about that to frame up that issue, because every once in a while you see cases where there are people that do go overboard on cruise ships, so we thought, hey, let's just take a look at this and address this. If you take a look from a statistical standpoint, on average, over the last 10 years, so from about 2008 timeframe to where we are right now, 2018, there's an average of 21 people that go overboard from a cruise ship. That includes crew members and passengers. Now, you think, wow, that's a lot of people. But if you look at roughly, there are 250 cruise ships that move passengers in the world and, and will move roughly about 24 million people a year. So, if you put that in context, 21 people on average going overboard is not a lot of people. It's still a lot when it comes to the situation and we would love to see that number get to zero. Um, I don't know if it will ever happen. One of the things that is difficult to get with statistics is the reason for going overboard. Now a lot of ships have CCTV systems that ha have fairly substantial coverage so typically you can see when the person goes overboard there's a lot of work being done in detection technology so that there's early warning when someone goes overboard but when you look at it if you look at a number of situations that happen the majority of this isn't all and not a blanket statement but the majority of people who go overboard on a cruise ship are typically suicide. Unfortunately, um, that is always going to be a problem, whether it's a crew member um, or a passenger. There are cases where people get pushed and there are murder cases and those do happen and do get investigated within the jurisdiction of where they happen. So we wanted to highlight there's some of the technology and some of the potential con technology constraints and some of the things that are going on to be able to detect a man overboard. But here's one of the issues, and this is a little bit rated R. When someone falls overboard from a cruise ship, typically from a high deck, the impact of when they hit the water typically will render that person unconscious or sometimes just the fall alone will kill the person. If not, there's a number of other things that happen um, once the person goes overboard. I don't want to get into the great detail um, about that, but the survivability of a fall overboard from a cruise ship from a high deck is almost impossible. There are miracle cases that happen that are absolutely unbelievable when you read about them of people who have fallen overboard and have actually been recovered alive but that typically does not happen the majority of overboards that happen the person is usually killed by the impact or actually killed by the vessel um, after they've fallen overboard one of the items that we've covered here before on the vlog is the Cruise Vessel Safety and Security Act enacted here in the United States back in 2010 and it addresses a number of items to improve safety and security on board the cruise ships. One of the items uh, that was addressed in the CVSSA was to raise the height of the rails on open decks of the cruise ships to at least 42 inches. If you've been on a cruise ship recently, you know that most of those deck heights are actually even higher in some cases than 42 inches, so it makes it pretty difficult for you to accidentally, even if you trip, to fall overboard. So there's been some improvements to that. There's been improvements to the CCTV technology on board when it comes to being able to capture those images and see people actually go overboard. 
the unfortunate thing is it's very difficult with today's current technology and I think as we integrate potentially machine learning and AI into CCTV systems that will really help improve the monitoring of these systems on board to potentially look at man overboard. There are private companies out there, and I'm not going to mention any of them, um, but there are private companies that make technology to be able to try to detect man overboard from a cruise ship. There's a lot of moving pieces when it comes to this um, that you want to be able to not have false alarms if it's a bird or if it's something else that's happening or there's a, there's a line that's off of a lifeboat that's blowing in the wind. That there's still, I think from a technological standpoint, a little ways to go to improve these technologies for um, when it comes to detecting a man overboard. There was an interesting um, partnership that was put together by uh, the cruise line MSC. Uh, they also uh, were working with uh, Hewlett Packard Ener Enterprises and Bosch and the three of those organizations worked together to develop a man overboard technology and this was just specifically for the MSC cruise lines where they were able to through going through about 25,000 hours of videotape and just research and development get the detection for a man overboard up to 97 percent so it'll be interesting to see how's that technology will move forward and that technology will commercialize. Um, and again, like I said, there's other private companies that are working on this and some really interesting technologies that I think will come into play. Again, unfortunately, like we mentioned in, in segment one on here, most of the time when there is a man overboard and people hit the water, Unfortunately, it's usually a traumatic and it's a death event um, when they do hit the water. So most of the time, even if you do have all of this detection technology, um, it, it, I don't think it's going to help in, as far as preventing and, and saving lives. But it would in the cases where people have actually survived. And that was one thing I wanted to talk about. Here in 2018, so depending on where you're, when you're watching this vlog, I just wanted to put some context around it. On June 30th, in the Straits of Florida. So between Cuba and Florida, there was a crew member who went overboard on a Norwegian cruise ship. That crew member survived the fall and actually survived in the water for almost 24 hours before he was picked up by a Carnival cruise ship. That is, is a miracle when it comes to people falling overboard. And if you, if you go into your favorite search engine and you look for man overboard survival, the cases are extremely interesting of survival because not only did people survive the fall and the hit in the water, but they had to survive in the ocean for a long time before they were picked up, which is really interesting. A little fun fact, if you don't know it, people, we are naturally, when you don't panic, buoyant in salt water so you can actually float in salt water for a much longer period of time than you can in fresh water so that's why these people are able to survive here for over 24 hours so if you're on board a cruise ship just a couple of things to remember um, when we talk about man overboard number one always be aware of and cognizant of your surroundings your situation and where you are cruise ships do get into rough seas and rough weather so you want to make sure that if it is a day with rough seas and rough weather that you don't go out onto the into the open decks if you have any issues with with walking or mobility that there would be any kind of an issue um, or you would get an injury things can happen at sea it can be a beautiful clear calm day and a rogue wave can come about and really toss the ship around in certain parts of the world storms and, and very nasty storms, non-tropical systems will spool up very rapidly and bring high winds and high seas. So you want to be cognizant of your surroundings and your situation. Most cruise lines that I've had the opportunity to go out on and to work with do a very good job of keeping passengers warm and on days where there's inclement weather most of the time the outer decks have been secured. Also another thing to remember when you go on board a cruise ship always moderate your level of drinking. A lot of times the issues that are surrounded with man overboard, whether it's suicide or something else, usually have a component of overconsumption of alcohol. So when you get on board, enjoy yourself and have a good time, but don't overconsume. Hey, thanks for joining us today. We really appreciate all the viewers that we have. Make sure you hit the like button for all those videos that you like. Subscribe to our channel so you get notified when we post new videos. Also, be sure to connect to us through our social media, detailed in the banner above and also in the comments section below. We want to hear from you guys, and we want to put forward information on topics that you guys are interested in the maritime industry. Also, if you have any questions when it comes to maritime risk management, regu maritime regulatory compliance, 
or Maritime Security, don't hesitate to reach out to us here at IMSA. We have a number of phenomenal experts that are ready to help you out. Because remember, we always want to steer you in the right direction.